Hiya pals, Disney devotee here. Welcome back to my channel. Last week, I discussed Disney child stars. It's a topic I'm really passionate about, so if you haven't seen it yet, I would love for you to give it a watch. I really want to discuss those kind of topics further in future videos, but for my mental health, I'm only going to do the darker, more serious, more intense kind of videos once or twice a month. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, today is going to be kind of a fluffier topic. I love talking about celebrities at the Disney parks. And thus far, I've talked about Princess Diana's visit to Walt Disney World and Joan Crawford's connection to It's a Small World. Today, I'm going to talk about the Beatles. Let's get into it. Disney devotee. As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps my channel out so much and it helps you to not miss one single upload. It's kind of interesting when people ask me if I'm a Beatles fan because to be honest, I'm not sure. I definitely grew up listening to their music. One of my sisters is a Beatles mega fan, so I learned more about the Beatles than I probably would have chosen to learn on my own. She was into the Beatles and I was a Judy Garland mega fan, so we each kind of had our own things. And if you're a sibling, you probably understand what I'm talking about, like, you know, my sister likes this, and my other sister likes this, and I like this, and there's no crossover. <laughs> I even went to a Ringo Starr concert about 10 years ago, and my seat was like really super close to the stage. But again, I went with my sister, who is the Beatles fan, and it was fun. I enjoyed it, but like, you know, it wasn't Liza Minnelli or anything, in case you needed a reminder that I'm gay. <laughs> Anyway, I like the Beatles music just fine, but I would say I'm more so interested in the Beatles' individual lives and their relationships with one another. Add in a historic Walt Disney World visit and you have my full attention. Just in case you don't know who the Beatles are, they are a pop rock band that became huge in the 1960s. The Beatles are great! Mommy and me say so. and teenage girls outside complaining that they don't want to mob you, they just want to speak to you. What do you think about this? Do you want to talk to them? Well, have you ever tried talking to about 200 people at once? They are the biggest, most influential band of all time. Its members were Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, George Harrison, and John Lennon. They hold the record for being the best-selling band ever, and they hold the most number one hits. I honestly think it's nearly impossible to truly comprehend how big they were. By the late 1960s, there were a lot of issues between the band members. Big egos, drug use, and creative differences, just to name a few. When I was a kid, I thought that the band broke up only because of John Lennon's girlfriend, Yoko Ono, but it's honestly not that simple, and I really think they still would have broken up even if she wasn't around. I think that the cracks were already starting to show. But I'm no expert. <laughs> Beatles were over by 1970, but not officially. Papers needed to be drawn up and signed by the band members to officially terminate the Beatles, which I didn't even really think about or realize is a thing until I started researching this, but it makes perfect sense from a legal standpoint. Uh, John Lennon himself even said it was like a divorce. But by 1974, these papers were still not signed by all of the band members. Paul McCartney and George Harrison were together at a meeting in New York City to officially end the Beatles. Ringo Starr was not there in person, but he had already signed the paperwork and he joined this meeting via speakerphone. The fourth Beatle, however, bailed and didn't show up to this meeting, even though it was only a couple blocks away from his apartment. 
John Lennon decided that the stars aren't right and he fled to Florida, more specifically the Polynesian Resort at Walt Disney World, which I think I'm going to start using as an excuse to go to Walt Disney World whenever I want to get out of something. I'm just going to say the stars aren't right and go to Disney, <laughs> right? Like who's with me? Let's make this a thing. My last trip to Walt Disney World was last year right before I moved, which is too long ago, but I'm hoping to rectify that soon. Anyway, one thing my wife and I did was have breakfast at the Polynesian Resort before we took the monorail over to Epcot. Which, side note, Tonga Toast is one of my favorite Disney foods, so if you've never had Tonga Toast, it's really worth it. It's kind of like a big cube of French toast with like banana in the middle. It's, it's delicious. So go to the Poly for breakfast. I think you will not regret it. I've never stayed at the Polynesian, but I love going there for the food and ambiance. I would say that the Polynesian and Wilderness Lodge are my top two Disney resorts I've not stayed at yet, but I'm hoping to do that soon. One of the two original Walt Disney World hotels, the Polynesian opened October 1st, 1971, the same day as Walt Disney World, of course. It is on the monorail loop and it is located on the Seven Seas Lagoon. The Polynesian had 492 rooms on opening day. And in case you've never been, I have the description of the Poly from the Walt Disney World website. So let's take a look at that. Celebrate the spirit of the South Pacific at this oasis of tropical palms, lush vegetation, and so much more. From moonlit nights immersed in the outdoor island ambiance to the exotic tastes of our world-class restaurants, discover the signature tropical atmosphere that's made Disney's Polynesian Village Resort a favorite Disney destination since 1971. So there you have it, in case you've never been. And between the two original Walt Disney World hotels, the Polynesian and the Contemporary, I would definitely choose the Polynesian. So John Lennon made the right choice in my opinion. And luckily for Beatles fans, we know what room John Lennon stayed in at the Polynesian. Located on the first floor of the Samoa building, or building number six, room 1601 is where Beatles history was made. Looking at the map, room 1601 is conveniently located close to the lobby and not too far from boat transportation. I've read some reviews that because of its location, it's not a very quiet room, so keep that in mind if you're wanting to stay there. However, I'd bet if you're a Beatles fan, you're not really staying there for quiet. You probably are staying for other reasons and most likely don't care. <laughs> also, just a heads up, you can absolutely request to have a certain room or, you know, a certain floor when you stay at a Walt Disney World Resort. But keep in mind, it is a request and it's not guaranteed. And I'd wager that 1601 is a highly requested room at the Polynesian Resort. So if you want to book that room, book it as far out as possible. Thanks to TikiManPages.com, here's a sneak peek of what the rooms at the Polynesian Resort looked like in 1974. I don't know if I've ever seen anything more 70s in my life. <laughs> I tried to find out if John Lennon had a favorite ride at Walt Disney World, but unfortunately I couldn't find any information on that. However, I did find some fun stories about this beetle and the monorail. Now keep in mind, in 1974, Walt Disney World only consisted of Magic Kingdom, the Contemporary, the Polynesian, and Fort Wilderness. So it was a lot smaller than it is now. What I find fascinating is that John Lennon was even able to take the monorail. Nowadays, a celebrity that big would most certainly get private transportation. He did, however, get to ride in the very front of the monorail. Cast member Hal East recalls, 
I met John Lennon at Disney World while working as a monorail operator. He, Julian, and Mei Peng rode in the front of the monorail on different occasions with me. I allowed him and Julian to operate the train. The second day, John came out to the station and actually asked if I was working. He and Julian waited until I arrived in the train and again rode with me and drove the train. Unfortunately, there was a fatal monorail accident in 2009, and for safety reasons, guests are no longer allowed to ride in the very front of the monorail. Mei Peng, John Lennon's mistress, also shared this monorail story. Riding the Disney World monorail back to our hotel, I overheard a father tell his son he had heard a beetle was visiting. Which beetle? The father said, George Harrison. I burst out laughing. John asked why. We then all started laughing so hard that the dad turned around. It then registered which beetle was at the park that day and why we were laughing. It's okay, John jokingly said. We all look alike. I love that story and that is honestly something that would totally happen to me. <laughs> On December 29, 1974, lawyers tracked down John Lennon. Sitting at the Polynesian, John finally signed the papers that officially ended the Beatles, potentially the greatest band of all time. I can't help but wonder if John Lennon was running away from signing the papers because it was so painful. But I won't pretend to be an expert on, honestly, my least favorite Beatle. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's always very controversial when I admit that, but it's the truth. In my mind, I like to picture John Lennon signing the paperwork and then walking over to the Polynesian beach where he can see the Cinderella castle off in the distance. Standing silently, he listens to the water of the Seven Seas Lagoon lap upon the beach while he grieves the end of an era. Perhaps it even crossed his mind how ironic it was that this magical band, the Beatles, was terminated at the most magical place on earth. I have no idea if any of that happened. Um, probably not, but that's what I picture in my mind. <laughs> So that, my friends, is how the Beatles ended and how their history will always be connected to Walt Disney World. I really enjoyed learning this fascinating Disney and Beatles history. Most importantly, I learned that it is perfectly acceptable to say the stars aren't right as an excuse to go to Walt Disney World, so you can use it too. <laughs> If you made it to the end of this video, be sure to comment down below who your favorite beetle is, and I will be sure to comment my favorite too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon. Bye bye Audience, I'm saying to you, what I want to say to the audience is, have you ever felt like this? Because it's what I'm going through now.